Good evening. It is 8.40. We're ready to get started. Today, we're going to be learning Daf Gimel Amud Beis and as well Daf Dalet. Um, some Gevald Gemaras and Lamdus. A lot of the uh, the a lot of the beginning blood of this Masechta are very meaty with Lamdus. We're only going to raise the questions. We have no time to dig in, especially tonight with the blot and a half. We're right now starting about six lines from the bottom on Daf Gimel Amud Alam. On Shabbos, we learned about uh, the Machlokas, Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. And we learned that they have a double machlokas. They have a machlokas about what is the minimum shear of a sukkah. Is it rosh over rubo? Or is it rosh over rubo v'shochano? Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai respectively. And then we saw another opinion that we didn't dig into, which was the shita of Rebbe. And Rebbe says that a sukkah has to be a minimum footprint of four by four. Okay, now here comes the lambdas. The Gemara wants to know, is this four by four requirement of Rebbe that the footprint of the sukkah should be four by four. Is that similar to the din of a bias? We know that a mezuzah dogma has to be in a room that's four by four. So this is how the Gemara phrases the question, Gimel Amad Aleph, six lines from the bottom. Man tana lahadatana Rabbanan. Who is the one? Who is the tana who agrees to the following? Bayis she'in bo arba al arba. Arba amos al arba amos. If you have a house that is less than four by four, so then, pater mina mezuzah, as mentioned, we know the Torah has a requirement that you have to put a fence on your roof, but that's only true if it has a din of a bias. If your house is three by three, it's not a house, and therefore it's not subject to the rules of maqeh. Under the circumstances when a house would, in theory, get a nega, not shaya. There is no nega by a house that's less than four by four because it's not a house. In a place that's mukaf arichoma. If, if it's a city that's surrounded by walls, if you sell your house, there's a built-in one-year ability to, to go back on your contract, to renege on your contract. However, if the house is less than three by three, that law does not apply. Next, two lines from the bottom. Remember the psukim in Sefer Dvarim. Eber Mitzvah Parsha speaks about this. You buy a new house, you go off to war. No, 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 no. Someone else might, might make a Chanukah Sabayis in your house if you, that's not right, so we send you home. Doesn't apply if your house is less than four by four. You're not allowed to make an Erev in that house. In order to carry in a Mabu, again, it's less than four by four. As well, you can't even put an Erev in this whole Mishnah, this whole, is it a Mishnah? The whole Brisa here is speaking specifically about a house that's less than four by four. None of these halachos apply. None of them apply. If you're trying to extend your tchum, so we know that tchum Shabbos, you get 2,000 amos, and if you have another house somewhere in a conveniently located, you can extend. No, it doesn't work for that either because it's not big enough. And lastly, brothers who earn a Yerusha and Shutvin who are splitting in business partnership, if the house is less than four by four, it is not split. So what's the Gemara's question? Who is the author of that? What's the lumdas? This this Bryce has nothing to do with, with sukkis at all. It's all, only about bias. Is, is this a house or not? So if it's less than four by four, it's not a house. So maybe says the Gemara, Lema Rebihi. Gimel Amid Beis, three lines down. Maybe Lema Rebihi below Rabbanan. Maybe it's Rebbe who says that a sukkah is four by four. And just like a sukkah is four by four and a bias is four by four, perfect, perfect. We know exactly what we're talking about. And now we can say that Abayas and Sukkah are the same. And the Rabbanan, who say that the shear is super small, Rosh of Urubo Vishulchano, no, they don't agree with this Mishnah. So that's the, the Lamdash question. Do we say that the four by four shear of Abayas and Rebbe's four by four shear of a Sukkah are connected? Yes or no? Says the Gemara, they're not connected. Third line down. Afilu Tema Rabbanan, no. No, even the Rabbanan would agree to everything in the list that we just saw. No mezuzah, no makeh v'chuleh. Why? Because as follows. Third line down, give me base. Ad kan lo kamri rabbanon elo le'inyan sukkah. The only reason they had such a small shear by sukkah, you're talking Rosh Hashanah v'shulchano, is because sukkah the diras arayi. It's meant to be temporary. Aval lagabe be'abayis the diras kevahu afidu rabbanon modu di ispe dalad al dalad amos dairi be'inchi. When it comes to a house, that's a place where people live. Even the minimum standard in our culture is a mobile home. It's still four by four. People live in them, their houses though. And there's a difference between that which is temporary and that which is permanent. That's four by four for a house as a minimum. So therefore says the Gemara, no, you're trying to make an equivalence between the world of Sukkah where Rebbe has the footprint of four by four as the minimum and the world of bias where we know for sure it's four by four. Maybe they're one in the same. No, they're not one in the same. They're not one in the same. Now, for the rest of the page, we're going to analyze the Bryce that we just learned about bias. 
So what we're learning for the next 25 lines has nothing to do with Hilchos Sukkot at all. Nothing. Not even with Masechah Sukkah. It's a tangential conversation from the Brisa that we just bought to ask the larger question of whether or not Bayes and Sukkah are on the same uh, playing field. Amar Mar, seven lines down. We said, The first five halakos that we learned there. What, what does that have to do? Why, why are they excluded if the house is less than four by four? My time. But because the bias, the word bias is in all of those psukim. All of them have that word in there. So therefore, by definition, a bias which is at its minimum. There's no such thing as a bias that's less than four by four. Therefore, all of these first five halachos in the bias that we learned on the bottle of, of Gimel Amad Aleph, all of them have the din of a bias, four by four. Therefore, if you have, you're less than that, all the halachos fall away. So it's not shayach anymore. It's not a house. Next, 10 lines down. We said all of these halachos as well. These were halachos six, seven, and eight that we learned in our mission on the previous page. Why? My time? Because this is not a place where people live. No one rents. I, I traveled once. I stayed in this hotel. I didn't realize how small it was. Can't remember the name of the place. I walked into the room. It was a, it was a jail cell. It was like 10 feet by six feet. I turned around, I walked right out and I went to another hotel. It was it was an hotel room. There was a bed and there was a bathroom. In New York, they have them. That's exactly where it was in. And I'm like, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, OU, for getting me another hotel room. I'm not staying here. And I went somewhere else. Okay, sorry. sorry. My bosses are watching, I apologize. Previous, previous boss, for everyone who's watching. Says the Gemara, next, Eruvi Chatzeros. We said that for a ruve chatzeros, that's the type of verb that allows us to carry here. Ein manichimbo, that's not allowed. Aval shitu, when it comes to shitu of mavuos, to carry in a mavui, a mavui is a place into which a number of chatzeros dump into. So in that place, that we would say, yes, manichimbo, you're allowed. Why are they different? Why isn't eruv chatzeros and shitu pe mavuos different? My taima, because one third of the way down, the logara mechatzer shevim mavui. Because when it comes to shitu mavuos, that's no worse. The mavui itself is no worse than it, the, the chutzar in a mavui is no worse than this small house, which is less than four by four. How do we know this? It's not because the Mishnah writes. Eruve chutzeros bechutzar. When it comes to eruv chutzeros, you can put the eruv inside a chutzar. And she tupe mavui the mavui. And you can put the, the, you can put the, the eruv of the shituf mavuos mm -hmm. in the mavui. Asks the Gemara in analysis, when we, when we analyze this mitzvah, I don't this, uh, this uh, halacha, I don't understand. Eruve chutzeros bechutzar. You're not allowed to put the Eruv in a Chatzar. Hatnan, Hanosen Eruvo, the base shar, which is a small room. Achsadra Umir Pesas, two different types of porches. Eino Eruv, and they're in a Chatzar. So we see that your line that you just said, one line above of Eruv, uh, Eruv of a base shar, of, uh, what the line was, Eruv e Chatzeros, that you can put it Bechatzar. That's not true. That Darsham Eino Oser. In fact, someone who lives in that space, they don't even cause a problem if they're not part of the Eruv. Normally, the rule is, that everyone needs to be part of the Eru. But here, not everybody's part of it. If you live in that space, you're fine. You don't ruin it for everybody else. No, that's totally fine. So then the Gemara says, you're absolutely correct. And we're missing a word. We learned this, Sugi Maseches Erevin. And says the Gemara halfway down, Ela'ema, you're right. The Mishnah should have said, Eruvi Chatzeros, Babay Yishev It can't be in a Chatzer. It has to be in a house. Good. What's the second part, which applies to our, our question? Bishitupe Mavuos, Bechatzer Shebe Mavui. That you have to put into a chutzr that's within the mavui. The high and this very small house of ours is the low garam e chutzr sheba mavui. And there's no difference at all. So that says the Gemara is why we make a distinction between eruv e chutzeros and shitupe mavuos. Says the Gemara, what about the next halach on that Mishnah? The ain osin oso ibur bein shtei ayaros. You're not allowed to use it to connect two cities. The afilu kiburgin in lo mashvinale. It's not even like the little hut that a security guard would work in. It's a zero. My time up because. A burgen in chazu lemil saihu. At least a burgen and it's usable. You're there for it to be a security guard. Great, it's small. Security booths are small. That's fine. But the high, when you have a house, you're calling it a house. Lo chazu lemil say. That's not giant. The whole house is is a dalad al dalad almost a six by six. It's tiny. That's not a house. That is not a house. Good. Next, let's talk about the last piece of the the brisa from the bottom of Gimel Amid Beis. The ein ha'achin ve'ashutim kol kinbo. We said that when there are brothers who earn a Yerusha or Shutfin who are in business together, we said that they're not allowed to be whole, like they can't split a house that is this shear of less than four by four. Said so Gamar makes it to you. Time the less be Dalaramos. The reason why is because the house wasn't Dalaramos. However, ha is be Dalaramos, Ah, beautiful. So if it was five amos by five amos, 
and you're in partnership with someone, or two brothers have a Yerusha, we should say that they're, they should be cholek, right? The father says, I've left you a house. What? In ownership. They sell it and they, they'll split the worth. Or yes, one lives on one half, one lives on the other, one way or the other. But says the Gemara, in diuk form, it seems to be that this halacha, because our, what was our whole Bryce talking about? Anything that's less than four by four. Okay, this one's five by five. So now the Achen and the Shutman should split. No, they can't split. No, it's none. Ten lines from the bottom. Each of them need Dalit Amos. So your Diuk from our Mishnah, our Bryce on the bottom of the previous page said four by four is the minimum share for a house. Oh, and therefore the brothers can't split. But if it's more than four, that's the Diuk, they should be able to split. Does Gemara no? That Diuk is totally wrong because a separate Mishnah teaches us that each person has to be able to get Arba Amos Lazev Vilazev. That's much more. So if you have a four by four and another four by four, each person gets 16 square feet. That's insufficient because all we have here is five by five, which is 25. It's not enough. It's not enough. So then what do we do with this? Says the Gemara. Ella, you're right. Ema, the language needs to be changed. Ain bodin chaluka We're really not talking about the house. We're talking about outside that house in the chatzah. And this is a machlokas in the Amorai. To Amor Rav Huna, chatzah lefi pesocheha the, the actual outdoor space within a chatzar is divided in a Yerusha or in a Shutbis based on how many doors there are. So Rashi here brings a case where what, there's one large house and three small houses. And according to Rav Huna, the people sacheha, you, one person gets uh, one section because he has one door in a larger house and another person gets three sections because he's got three, he's got three doors. Rav Chizda says no. Rav Chizda amar no sin l'chol pesach pesach arba amos. Every doorway gets Ex, uh, explicitly four amos, the hasha'ar cholken also b'shava, very, very different, right? So the two shitas are very different here. Dahani mili bayis dimelehave koi, when there's a house and it's supposed to last for, forever, great, yahiv no lechater. But hi, this tiny house that we're discussing, this very, very small house, which is less than dalad al damid, dalad dilemistar koi, says it's going to be destroyed. That's not a normal house. We assume that the house won't last. It's too small. Lo yahavin on the chater, then it will not get a chater. Now, now, all of this again was a tangent, nothing to do with Elchos Sukkah. Summary uh, up until this point is the Lumdashi question only, which is whether or not we make an equation between the Dalad al Dalad requirement of a bias to the world of Sukkah, where Rebbe holds that the footprint of a Sukkah needs to be Dalad al Dalad. And seemingly from the Gemara in Lumdus, we do not connect the two worlds, they're totally separate. And then we went through each minor Sukkah, the Sukkim, and therefore excluded. Whatever the case may be, all of the preclusions therein. And now let's get back into our discussion that we started with, which is what happens when there is a sukkah that has an inside void of 20 amos. So we said in our mission, it's not kosher. Great. Let's talk about some practical solutions. Two lines from the bottom, give them a base. What if we raise the floor of the sukkah in order to make the void less than 20 amos? Clever idea. You got your sukkah at 22 amos. Okay, it's too tall. Uba lemata. You go into the house, you're like, uh, listen, it's sukkahs. I don't have a sukkah right now, and I need a sukkah. So I'm going to go take my comforters and my pillows, and I'm going to lay them out on the bottom until the void is less than 20 amos top to bottom. So says the Gemara. Great solution, right? No, it's not a great solution. Lo have a mute, says the Gemara. That doesn't work at all. Top of Dalad Amadal, why? Even if you nullify them and say, I'm leaving them here forever, I'm never going to move them. Says the Gemara, we don't care. We have a rule in my house, no feet on the furniture when you're wearing shoes on. Should be an obvious rule, but I have to repeat it regularly, as I'm sure we all probably do. Why? Because that's gross. All of a sudden, you're going to take your blankets and pillows and put them on the floor of your sukkah and everyone's going to trip. No, you might want that, but you're a yachid. In order to be able to minimize the void of the 20 Amos sukkah, by adding up from the bottom, we have, a, we have a formula. You need to add things to the bottom that are normal to add, and you need to do bittle. Now, what does that mean? It means that this is done for. I'm leaving it there. And here's another example the Gemara gives. Second line, Tevin, if you have straw, that's normal to put on the ground. Ooh, bitlo, uh, that's our formula. Tevin, ooh, bitlo, it's something normal to go on the ground, and you will mavatal it. What's the din? Have a mute. Perfect. Now your sukkah's kosher. You did a great job. And then the kol shikane off our bitlo, all the more so if you take dirt. Right, we see we're seeing a hierarchy here. The weird things, pu uh, pillows and uh, blankets, and that's out. Right, but the dietary is below them. Tevin is straw, more normal, definitely more normal. 
uh, and therefore fine. And dirt is even uh, even more obvious than that. The coal chicane says, come on, I'll a bit though. Great. Now let's get into the murky questions here. What if you have the right materials, but you are not mavatalit? And you put it at the bottom of your sukkah. Does that count for minimizing the void of 20 amos into 19 amos? Says the Gemara, third line, Tevin. Let's say you put down straw. The ain't asi lefanoso. You have no intention on removing it. However, you did not perform bittel, not bittel, Pesach bittel. You were not mevatel that to stay there. You knew it was going to stay there, but you didn't say out loud, this is going to stay there. And then the Afar stam, and even the more obvious case is Afar. What do we do? That's a machlokes or biosi verabbana. That's not simple. So now we have the right material, but we're missing bittel, machlokes in the Tanaim. We have the right materials and that it's not pillows and blankets. It's Teben and it's Afar, but we don't know exactly what your intentions were when you put down the Teben and the Afar. Do we say that you, okay, I want it to be there forever, but do you have to do Bittal verbally? Yes or no? That's a Machloka, says the Gemara. What does the Mishnah say? Fourth line, it's non. The Mishnah writes, we learn this in Maseches Erevin. Let's say there was a mace in the house. This is a, the case is a, a side case, but let's say there's a mace in the house. You're trying to minimize the, the movement of Tuma. So you, you jam filled the house with, with objects. You put in um, straw and you put in pebbles and you do bitl. What's the diuk? Says the Tanakama. Bitlo in lo bitlo lo. Only if your mevatel does it count. Let's bring that back to our case. With the tevin that you put there, but you are not mevatel verbally, nothing doing until you actually do the bitl with the tevin and you layered it. I don't care how tall it is, five amos, whatever it is. And now, you're, now your sukkah is only, it doesn't make a difference. Tanakam holds, if you're not mevatel the tevin that you put on the bottom of your sukkah, even if you never intend to move it, the halacha is that it is not batel and it doesn't count and your sukkah is still not kosher. The Tani Allah, however, we have a brisa that follows up on this Mishnah with a machlokas. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Teven ve'en asid lefanoso. You have Teven. You don't ever intend on moving it. And you did not do bitl. Harehu ke'afar stamu batel. So that's the machlokas. Rabbi Yossi was of the opinion that if you put down the Teven and you planned on leaving it there and you didn't say a word, still good to go. It's obvious. It's like, oh, come on. I knew what your intentions were. This is always the case. Do we have to be explicit? Do we not have to be explicit? This comes up all the time in halacha. So that's why over here, that's the machlokas that we have here. Um, and uh, it's that, that remains the machlokas of Rabbi Yossi, who says that Tevin, and the last case, if you have dirt and you plan to remove it, dirt should be the, the easiest one because dirt and dirt are, it's dirt. But what if you intend on removing it? For the next eight days, I'm going to put in two feet of dirt, an ama of dirt, whatever it is, to make sure that my sukkah is now kosher. But on the ninth day, the day after Yantip, I'm removing it. And then the void is going to again be over 20 amos. Says the Gemara, Hareu Kistam Tevin below Bato. That doesn't work either. So all of this was approach number one to try and solve the, the problem of the sukkah that's too tall by raising the floor. Let's try approach number two. Ten lines down. Here we go. Okay, very good. It's still, it's too tall. But the Hutsin Yordin Besoch Kaf Amma. But there are branches that are falling into the sukkah, into the 20 amma void. They go down to the 19th amma, whatever is they're hanging down into the void. So listen to what the Gemara says. Im tzilsan meruba mechamsan. If that which is hanging down, if it's tzilsan meruba mechamsan, if it's thick enough that in and of itself it could count as schach, then the halacha is kshera. The sukkah is kosher. Very good. Bim la psula. Oh, so this is what the Gemara says. So you have your sukkah. You have a layer of schach on the top that's perfect. And hanging down from, when we were little kids, uh, we did, uh, we had the greens. We had the, the greens. They smelled great. And they would hang into the sukkah a little bit. Now, if all of the hanging material was so thick that without the top layer, just the hanging layer could actually function as schach, then you are totally fine. Basically, you have a very thick layer of schach. It's not just the top layer. It's thick. And therefore, your sukkah is kosher because your, your schach is now not above 20 amos. It's dipping into the 20 and you're good to go. However, if it's not that way, namely if it's the reverse, if the schach that's hanging in is not silsan merubim chamsan, but chamsan merubim mitzilsan, it's not very thick. So then under those circumstances, it is puzzle. Now the Gemara tries to make a tzushta. Remember the other day, we learned what the minimum height of a sukkah is, which was 10 tfachim. So it says the Gemara as follows. Haisa gvo yud tfachim, the most, the shortest possible minimal shear. It's only 10 tfachim tall. The hoots in Yordan Lesoch Yud. And within the tent, it's still the branches are falling in. It's 40 inches. 
You're crouched on the ground to start with, and now there's branches hanging in your head in your soup. What do you do? So it says the Gemara, Sabar Abai, he's like, I got a Svara. Sabar Abai, the Maymar, as follows. Remember, like we said above, that only if that which is hanging is Silsan Meruba Mechamsan is so thick, that's when it lowers the height of the sukkah. But what about the reverse? We said if there's more uh, sunlight than shade, then it doesn't count. So he, he wanted to argue that Imchamsan Meruba Mitzilsan, Chera, that it doesn't ruin it. If that which is hanging into the already very, very low sukkah is not thick, and that layer that's within the 10 Tvachim is. Uh, it should still be a kosher sukkah because that's halachically not schach. Oh, so says the Gemara, good svara, but incorrect. Amrali Rava, one third of the way down, ha dira srucha hi adam darba dira srucha. No, if you have branches hanging into your sukkah that's only 10 tvachim tall, the whole sukkah is puzzle. It's not puzzle midina, but it doesn't have the din of a sukkah because it's a, it's a, it's a dira srucha. Nobody lives, it's nebach, it's a nebach sukkah, and it doesn't count. Good. Next. One third of the way down, right by the pictures, and we're going to use the pictures. Does everyone have pictures in their gemara? And okay, just making sure. I know the Oz Bahadur has one. Okay, here we go. Because it literally means srucha, it's like means gross, but it uh, it just means it's not a place where people live. It's uh, it's not mechubad. It's not a, it's not a nice place to live. So he would say it's not kosher even if it's with the balance not more. Right, and even, and it's cham sami ruba That's right. Still not be a kosher. He would take away the mitzvah because it's we would need the Rishonim to explain his argument because technically speaking, it should be kosher. Right. And is the argument of Dira Srucha a psul? Or is the argument of Dira Srucha is that it's not mechubad? Because Abayi's lumdus is right. Abayi's lumdus is that no, it's just like the 20 Amosukah that you said was still was still problematic because it was such a thin layer. The lumdus of, of Abayi makes sense. And the answer, the answer of Rabba is very complicated, and it seems just the way the Rambam has his notations here is that we paskin like Rava, but I didn't look into the Rishonim here. Good question. Haisa Gavoa Me'esr Ma'ama, another attempt to lower the, the to lower the 20 Ama void. Ubana Ba'itzdaba, and you built a block. It's like, looks like a built-in bench, as you can see from the from the pictures. It's a three-walled sukkah, and you built this bench. Kinega Dovenheim Tzai, on the middle, back wall of your three-walled sukkah, Al Pnei Kula, across the width of the that, that entire back wall. V'yesh Ba'hechshar Sukkah, it's a minimum shear of seven by seven plus. Uh, seven by seven is a square. Uh, it's a, a minimum square of seven plus uh, Tzvachim. And then the halach is that this whole sukkah is kosher, which is interesting because... oh. Only on the itztaba is the gap, is the void less than 20. On the other parts, it's not that way. Umin hatsad, what if you put it on the side? What if you put the itztaba on one of the side walls? So then we're getting into a beautiful idea called dofen akuma. Says the Gemara as follows. Im yesh misvas itztaba lekosel daladamos psula. Take a look at the, at the second picture. Itztaba min hatsad. We have a block that is put up against one of the walls. If from the innermost part of the block, to the opposite wall, you have more than Dalit Amos. The halacha is that that sukkah is psula. But, pachos me arba amos, if the gap from the inner side of the block to the opposite wall is less than Dalit Amos, that is kshera, the whole sukkah. Even though the parts that don't have an itzaba are more than 20 in void in height. Why? This is a din called dofen akuma. And the way the dofen akuma works is like this. Let's say that you have a wall. Oh, yeah, the sukkah part. What do you mean? Right. The whole sukkah is kosher. Oh, on the istaba, right. But the dofen akuma, the wall counts as a wall. Right. Correct. You can't, you're right. You can't sit there. The wall counts. You can't sit under the dofen akuma. Right. Right. Correct. So what dofen akuma does is it say it creates the wall for us. Correct. Why? Why? Why would it be different than this? Should be so dofen akum. So your first three walls. What? Why was the space in front in the first case? Why is this the space in front? So what? There's still a twenty amma void in the part that's not the istaba. There's that. You don't have to do dofen akuma. That's the chiddush that you have the three walls. The rest is. The is what halachic, so, what halachic mechanism are we using to allow someone to sit in a space that's greater than 20 amos? It's motion. Um, it's motion. It's, 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 it counts right here and it, it goes on. 
But right. what halachic so mechanism is that? It says kosher. Because look at Rashi. Because, because <laughs> <laughs> right in the airspace. In the airspace in the second picture says puzzle. Don't the say the The stack stacks as kosher. Beautiful. Or the barrier that you put. There's a huge rock. Look at how the open echo match works. If it, it if starts it out from the three walls, so it hopefully can continue. In the second example, where you put the stack, it's only covering, where you put the booster it's up, it's line. only two it's walls, it's so then you have to use Dovin Akuma. That's the difference. The second <laughs> example, your barrier is only, is only touching two walls, so you don't have to be kosher. All right, to be researched. We don't have time to do it now. Uh, thank you for raising that. All right, I didn't catch the uh, contradiction. We're using the kosher, the area outside the Yitzvah, it's the south, I don't think it's Is that what Rashi said? Rashi implies that he brings the Gordian test. That Moshe, that you that can you keep 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 what does Moshe mean? So you can extend Moshe. your stock for forever as long huh? as you got a good stock. Moshe. You can extend your stock, you can have more stock, more stock, more stock. Yeah, but if you don't have walls, you can have no walls. Extend the stock as well as long as you okay. have the walls weren't there. That's right. I have to spend more time on the Rashi. Okay. Psal Yotim in Asuka and Moshe. Okay. Great. Okay, so it says the Gemara in the second case where the Itztaba is there, you just taught us the din of Dofen Akuma, that yes, you have a sukkah on top of the Itztaba, and the, the, the wall on the opposite side has this function of Dofen Akuma. So it says the Gemara, my Kamash Mulan, what are you teaching me this Chiddush of Dofen Akuma? I learned it already. Damrina and Dofen Akuma, you're teaching me Dofen Akuma? I already had that somewhere else. Tanina, by Shinifchas. Let's say you have a house that had a that had a hole in the top of it. Besikich al Gabov. And then in that hole, you put Schach there. Oh, same distinction. That if the gap between the wall and the schach is four amos, that's problematic. So we already have a Mari Mokam that teaches us Dofen Akuma. So why do I need another Mishnah to teach me about Dofen Akuma? This one about the Itztaba on one of the side walls. So answers the Gemara, three-fourths of the way down, ten lines from the bottom. Maudatema, you might have said, Okay, one case makes sense. The case of the where there's a hole in the ceiling. And okay, that was already existing as a wall because it's Chazil Adofen. That makes perfect sense. But our case is difficult because our wall's 20 amos. Maybe we would have thought that with a wall that's 20 amos, there is no Dofen Akum. It only applies with a wall that's a wall. And it looks like a wall, but halachically it's too tall. So it says the Gemara, in our case, where the walls are 20, works even when you are talking about a very, very tall wall. Next case, 10 lines from the bottom. You build a pillar, uh, you build a block in the very middle of your sukkah. So it's not on the side, not on the back wall, it is in the middle. Let's say equidistant from all of the walls. If there is from the block in the middle of your sukkah, four amos plus to all the walls, the halacha is that the sukkah is puzzle. But but if it's less than four amos from the block in the middle of your sukkah to each of the three walls or the four walls, whatever it is, then the halacha is that it's ksheira. Says the Gemara, my kamashma dofen akuma, damina dofen akuma. It's the same exact thing we learned in the previous mission. You're teaching me the same exact thing again. So why do I need Dofen Akuma? Hainuach, it's the same thing. Both prices are teaching the same thing. So then says the Gemara, Bam Chiddush about how Dofen Akuma, not how Dofen Akuma works, about, but its scope. Ma'u detema Dofen Akuma, meruach achas amrinon. That yes, we believe in Dofen Akuma, but only when it applies to one wall. Aval kol ruach v'ruach lo. You might have thought that it doesn't apply to all. That's not correct. Kamash Mulan. So you could have a sukkah that is structured like this. Let's say that you have um, your walls and they're bent in up to three amos on all four sides. And in the middle, you have schach and you can sit right under the middle. It's a totally kosher sukkah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And people have overhangs on their house where this applies all the time. If you have a cantilever on the back of your house, your sukkah starts to get okay, all... These are Shilas and post came in. I know the rabbis have gone over to people's houses to look at their sukkahs to, to create these scenarios, these kulas, or you have to move your sukkah because the dofa akuma is too much. It's six feet of hanging over. I don't know if you can cantilever that far out. Construction guys in the room, I don't know. It's, it sounds like a lot, but <laughs> the point is that it, you have to make sure that it's safe and you have to make sure that it's actually kosher. But the chiddush of the Gemara here is that you can use dofa akuma on all four sides. Let's talk about a different case. I saw. Uh, it's all related, of course. Three lines from the bottom. Let's say it's a very, very, very small sukkah. It's less than 10, but you want to make it 10. So what you do is you go into the sukkah. I mean, with a very little shovel, you're talking very small. It's only three feet tall, the whole thing. So it's, uh, what do you do? And what you do is you dig 
You remove dirt to increase the void inside the less than 10 to make it 10. Great. Says the Gemara as follows. If there are three plus tefach from the, where you dug up to the walls on the outside, that sukkah is not kosher. We already are already familiar with the gimel tefachim. Rashi will tell us exactly what we're talking about. Dalit and Bez, But pachos mishlosha. You have your less than 10 uh, tefach sukkah. You dig in the middle of the sukkah. You dig, a, you dig a square, right? You're digging so that now from the schach all the way to the bottom is 11 tefachim. And your square that you dug out, that little hole that you dug, each side is within three tefachim of the walls. Halacha lamaisa, that is a kosher sukkah. Pachos mishlosha tefachim k'sher. Rashi, top Rashi, dibar maskel, pachos mishlosha. Ki lavud halacha lamosh misina. We've learned about lavud before. And lavud is basically a special din that not everywhere, but in many cases where, th- where two things are within three tefachim of one another, we treat them as one. And therefore, if your walls are like this, they come down. And then there's dirt, less than three tefachim. And then you get to your hole in the ground because there's less than three tefachim. It's as if the wall is perfectly straight, even though really it goes down, let's say, eight tefachim, cuts in two tefachim, less than three, and then goes down another four tefachim. That is a kosher sukkah, seemingly a perfectly kosher sukkah, relying on the dinim of Lavud. So let's talk about a lambda idea. The Gemara wants to know, why is it that in one case, by Dauphin Akuma, we're looking about at four amos, but when it, now we're using lavud. Why are you changing tools here? Says the Gemara, top line. In one case, all the previous blood, the whole previous blood, the whole, two, the whole previous blood that we've been learning is all about dalad amos. Oh, dofen akuma dalad amos, dalad amos. All of a sudden, over here, you switch over. Why? Great lambda is your question. When do we apply lavud and when do we not apply lavud? What's with the arba amos as it relates to lavud? Says the Gemara, third line down. Hasam. The Isay Ladofen, in all of the previous cases where you already have a wall, and that's not our problem. So then, Pachos Me Arba Amosagya, then having less than four is sufficient to make it kosher. But here, you had to build the rest of the wall by digging because it wasn't tall enough. It was only eight tall. You had to dig more wall. So, Hacha says the Gemara, Dilishavya Dofen, Ladofen, in order to make that wall a halachic wall of at least 10 Tvachim. So then, Pachos Mishlosha Tvachim in Ilolo. Then we rely on Lavud because you're creating a new wall. In the previous cases, we had a wall. Here, we didn't have a wall. In, right. So that's what he's saying is that when you don't have the wall that you need, then we need to use the tool of Lavud. But when you already have the wall, then Dofen Akuma has nothing to do with Lavud anymore. Now we're talking about a different din, which is a, a Dalad Amos din. Yet again, you have a sukkah, it's very tall. In the middle of the space of your sukkah, equidistant from all the walls, you build an amud, you build a little bit of a pillar. And that pillar is at least seven by seven. We should have said that maybe that extends up to the top and it's kosher. No, but in mechitzos hanikaros veleka. So he says that when it comes to good asik mechitzta, which is that we extend walls theoretically all the way up, that only applies when they when they have um, mechitzos hanikaros, and this pillar in the middle is not mechitzos hanikaros. It's just a, it's just you made something in the middle, but it's not mechitzos hanikaros. It's not like an extension from another wall. And now we're going to learn applications of this from here until the bottom of the page of the two dot six lines from the bottom. We are about ten lines down, quarter of the way down to the rabbi and the rabbi saw us in the brisa. Not arba kundisin. You put four poles in the ground, the sikeh al gabon, and then you put schach on top of them. What's the din? Machlokes tanoi. Reb Yaakov machshir v'chacham and posim. That's all we have. It's like looking at a chupa, right? Four poles schach. So machlokes. Reb Yaakov says good to go. Chacham and say no. Now here's the machlokes. There's, a, a, there's two different ways to understand where this machlokes, Rabbi Yaakov and the Chachamim, takes place. Amar of Huna machlokes al Sfas Hagag. What we're talking about is where the poles were put at the four corners of a building. So let's say you have a building that's 10 amos by 10 amos. You put a pole at each corner, okay? You put schach on top. So according to Rav Huna, the Machlokes is there. The Rav Yaakov Savar, I mean, a good, good Asik Mechitza. We allow the walls to continue from the building, because remember, you had a building. You put four poles in each corner, and because there are already walls, good Asik Mechitza, then great. That's great. Now your sukkah is perfectly kosher. But Rav Bonan Savar, I mean, good Asik Mechitza, they would say still no, but that is not the case here. So he says the Machlokes is only where it's on the edge, where the four poles are at the corners of the building upon which it's resting, Aval. The assumption from Rav Huna would then be, if you would have put the four poles centered on the roof of your, the flat roof of your, of your building, uh, then divriya kolpsula. So that's approach number one, that the machlokes is only when the poles are at the corners of the building so that the walls can go straight up. 
But Rav Nachman Amar Be'emsa Agag Machlokes. Rav Nachman says, no, the Machlokes of Yaakov and the Chachamim about the four poles is not when the four poles are at the corners of the building. They're in the middle of your roof. They're 40 feet away from the edge of your, of your walls. You're, it's totally in the middle. That's where the Machlokes is. So says the Gemara, well, if that's true, Rav Nachman Ibayaluhu, they asked a question in the base Medrash, Be'emsa Agag Machlokes. If you're saying that Rav Yaakov and the Chachamim are arguing in the case of the four condition with the, with the Schach on top is only in the middle, would we then say, Abal al Tzfas Hagag Dibri Akol Kshera? Would we say that seemingly the more obvious case, if you're saying the Machlokes is here in the middle of the roof, then wouldn't it then be Obvious that if the four poles were at the four corners of the building, we would have said good asik machitza, and everyone would agree. Oh, Dilmar, perhaps bein bezu uvein bezu machlokas that the machlokas is the same in both places. Then maybe we would say the machlokas is both when the when the uh, four poles and the schach are centered in the roof, or when the four poles are at the four corners of the building. How can you have a wall if it's in the center of the roof? How can what? How can you have a wall if it's in the center of the roof? If it's pitikra yored v'sosim. Pitikra yored v'sosim is a halacha that if you have a roof. And you have four poles. We we imagine that the walls drop to the floor. Fine. So I understand that for the case where the poles are on the outside of the roof. No. The Why? If the poles are on the inside of the roof, it's not, it, it's not good asik mechista. When the four poles are on the outside, on the corners of a building, we're imagining that the walls of the building continue to extend. That's a different mechanism in halacha called good asik mechista. Pitikri or v'sosim is different. And I asked this Shiloh once when I was up in Kamel Shabbat because they have this base medrash called Beit Be Yaakov Levi. It's in memory of Rabbi Matanki's son, Yaakov Zal. And, the, and it's, it's this, it's a building that's standing on huge cedar support beams and pitikri or v'sosim. So for the, let's say the Eruv was down. Can you carry in that room? The answer is yes, it's pitikri or v'sosim has nothing to do with what's underneath it. In, in a vacuum, it's in the middle of a desert. You have four poles and you have a, a covering, mutter. Totally different mechanism. It's not good asking mechisa, it's pizza kiryod v'sosim. So that might be what's going on here in the Gemara. That was the question. And the answer is teku, halfway down. We don't know. We don't know how Rav Nachman would explain his machlokas. Do we say that Rav Yaakov and the Chachamim are only arguing when the four poles and schach are in the midst of the roof with no walls to, to boot in regards to good asking mechisa? Or is it... Also a machlokas when it's the four corners of the building. We don't know. We don't know. Take it. Says the Gemara, Mesve, hold on one second. Noat dalad kundisin ba'aretz. We're now in the middle of nowhere. The Bryce says, you take four poles, stick them in the ground, with sikech al gabon. Machlokas. Rabbi Yaakov, machshir v'chacham and poslen. Says the Gemara, v'ha'aretz, in the middle of nowhere, you're in the desert. Dekeemtza hagag dami. Isn't that the same thing? as being in the center of a roof, as being in the middle of a desert. You have no walls to employ Gudasik Mechista. You're in the middle of nowhere. Four poles, schach. So there's still a machlokas there. To you have to do Rav Huna. That's a big, uh, that's, that doesn't work for Rav Huna because what did Rav Huna say? Their only machlokas is where, he said above, their only machlokas is where the poles are at the corners of the building. And he said that everyone agrees that in the middle of the roof, it's psula. What would Rav Huna do with this price in the middle of a desert? Every, that's a machlokes here too. So therefore, Ravuna has to be wrong. Says the Gemara, he might be doubly messed up because the ode says the Gemara, be'emtza hu depligi, they're arguing seemingly in the middle, aval al sfas hagag dibri al kolkshera. This is a diuk, of course, it's, not, it's lav dafka because above the Gemara said about this point that it was a teku. But here in this context, it seems to be that if in fact the machlokes is in the middle, so then it seems to be that al sfas hagag, everyone should say it's kshera. Maybe it's a double knock. Amar lach Ravuna, no, pligi be'emtza hagag, vuhu adin al sfas hagag, it's the same machlokes. Now, what's with this whole Rabbi Yaakov in the middle of the roof thing? If that's true, if it's the same machlokas, why did you have to talk about both cases? So says the Gemara, we had to talk about the case in the middle of the roof because it's a huge chiddush. Even in the middle of a roof, no good asik mechista, still Rabbi Yaakov would hold that that is a kosher sukkah. Last sukkah for the night, Tan Rabban and the rabbis have taught us, not arba kundisin ba'aretz v'sikech al gabon. Same case, four poles on the ground, and you put schach on top. Rav Yaakov Omer, this Bryce writes as, as follows. Rav Yaakov says, Rowan, kol she'ilu yechakiku v'yachlaku. If you take the poles, let's say you have cylindrical shape, shaped poles that are holding up each of the four poles that are holding them up, each of them are cylinders of wood. So if you would carve them out and, and split them up, v'yeshba and tefach lekan, v'tefach lekan. So again, you have a cylinder, right? You have a cylinder of wood and you want to cut it in such a way where there's a right angle of one tefach in each direction, okay? So if you do that, that should be reminiscent of, of Pas Ebiros. We learned about this in Erevin. Now what do you have? You have four corners, each of them are cylinders, and in theory, they could be carved out so that 
you can create an L shape, a right angle that's one tefach by one tefach. And then in theory, all of all four of them have the same exact thing. Says Rabbi Yaakov, he says that if you did that, then they have the same din as Pasevi Rose. Remember, we learned about Pasevi Rose and Erevin, that in the times of the Regal, when there were so many people coming up, human beings and animals, and they had to feed their animals. But the water that's inside the boar, that's Rishus HaYochid. Outside the boar is Rishus HaRabim. You're not allowed to, you can't stand outside and drink. So the Chachamim said, we have a great idea. We're going to put up Pasebi Rose. The Pasebi Rose are right angled devices. I've got one here, another one over there. And then we make a perfect square with these right angled one tefach and one tefach in each direction. So that's great. Then when you go inside of there, then it's Rishus HaYochid drinking from Rishus HaYochid. No problem at all. That works out perfectly. And that's the same thing that we said there. And Ve'im Lav, and if not, Eni Dorim Shum Yumad, if they are not thick enough, if the diameter of this uh, pillar of the cylinder is not thick enough to be able to carve out one tefach by one tefach, so then that's a problem. Then what would he say? It needs to be a minimum, um, a minimum girth. It needs to be a minimum diameter. If you do the math to put a square in inside of a circle, so then. Uh, in, in math, that, that diameter is x times the square root of two. And if you need it to be one, so then it means that the whole, uh, the tefach has to be the diameter of 1.414, which is a lot. It's, it's huge. That's a five inch thick post. That's pretty thick. It's more than that, actually. It's five and a half. So that's what he says is the case. The chachamim omrim, sorry, no dice. You cannot have a sukkah that's made out of diyumad. You cannot have a sukkah that's made out of these right angles, one tefach, one tefach over here. The next corner, one tefach, one. You can't do that. Why? And this is how we pass in Allah Chalamaisa. Because no sukkah is kosher unless you have two proper walls and the third wall being a minimum of a tefach. There's a beautiful board by the, uh, by the Arizal about this that after Rosh Hashanah, after Yom Kippur, they're very difficult times. So the Arizal, I think it's the Arizal, he writes this idea that you need um, one, full, uh, one full wall, another full wall, and a little tefach. It says a Kodesh Baruch who's giving you a chibuk on sukkis. It's a hug after a hard time. I know this was a tough couple of weeks with Elul and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. I know sukkis is two full walls with a tefach on the last wall. So that's how he frames out the beauty of sukkis. We'll stop right here and pick up from the two dots tomorrow night with Dapay, wishing you all a beautiful night.